Hey, Brad, you know how Nationwide is more than an insurance company? Yeah, they're one of America's largest financial services companies. We get that in a song like Business Life Retirement. Or Nationwide's there to protect. I'm kind of the jingle guy. I'm not sure I agree with that. Well, I'm not sure I like your hat. Well, that would never fit on you. Products issued by Nationwide Life Insurance Company or Nationwide Life and Annuity Insurance Company. The general distributor for variable products is Nationwide Investment Services Corporation, member FINRA, Columbus, Ohio. Hey, everybody, it's Dan. And Bran. Maybe you noticed that the Christmas Prince episodes one and two with Alonzo were removed uh, from, from the playlist on your, on your favorite podcast player. Well, they're back. Oh, thank God. And they're better than ever, Bran. I would say so. Because uh, we made a few edits. Uh, in listening back, we want to always be mindful about what we say and how we say it, even in jest. Uh, and we made some comments about uh, specifically Meghan Mar Markle that we found not really appropriate in, in, in looking back on things. We want to be above board. We want to be above reproach. And we want to honor the fact that people have had real experiences and had stuff happen in their life that maybe doesn't always need to be made That's fun. right. Comparing Meghan Markle and what she went through to what Amber's going through in this fictional universe with this fictional family and things that don't really matter at all wasn't cool. And we're sorry. We're sorry. And hopefully we've learned this lesson and you will learn it too. And we can fail forward and be better in the future. So we hope you enjoy the new and improved Christmas Prince 1 and 2 and Christmas Prince 3 comes out this Monday. Bye. This is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran and I'm forced to say I love <laughs> Netflix Christmas sequels. Uh, I'm Dan. It takes no forcing at all. I 100% despise Netflix Christmas sequels. I'm Alonzo, and I'm legally obligated to watch <laughs> Netflix Christmas sequels, and this, this is, is the Deck the, the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 everybody. Yes. Another week. Another week closer to Christmas. Christmas Prince 2, <laughs> even princier. Even princier. The princiest. That's exactly two, no, right. Two that's, that's princes. For three. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one is even worse. <laughs> go ahead now. <laughs> uh, Christmas Prince 2, everybody. Yeah. Mm. Man, if you're not waking up on a Monday raring to go for this episode, I don't know what's wrong with you. The princening. The princening. That's oh, right. Oh, I like that. I like That's that right. a lot. A good day to Prince 2. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just... <laughs> Now, uh, I did the say Legend I, of Curly's Prince. <laughs> yeah, name those movies. Go ahead. You should know mine. What did you a say? A Good Day to Prince 2. A Good Day to Prince 2. No. Okay. Guys. You, you have no chance of his. No. His is a city slicker. Bigsby Bucksby? I don't know. Mine's, <laughs> Bigsby Bucksby. Mine's Die Hard. You should oh, know Good yeah. Day to Die I, Hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. I yeah. love it. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I said we're one week closer to Christmas, and that is true, by technicality, of course. Um, we just got announced the um, new uh, summer slate. Yep, 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 yep. Which mm. we'll be doing a preview show. Thank God. I don't know what we do without preview. Episodes. I do feel like we are due. You know, the fur the the upfronts came and went, and no, you know, announcement of Christmas number. You know, I feel like yeah. earlier and earlier they're giving us the number. Yeah. Of what they're shooting for, we haven't heard yet. Dan and I this morning, and maybe we yes. need to do like a, a Hallmark News yeah, episode. State of the Union. I am under the impression, um, and I'll give you my reasonings, but I'm under the impression that Hallmark uh, Crown Media is uh, a little cash strapped. I'm in agreement with that. I, they're, I, they're laying people off. They're not. They're they're uh, they're not they're, hiring nearly as many of the big dogs not, to yep. act in the movies. Yeah, they're uh, they're doing a home and family, but just like as little as possible. Yep. I don't know. It yeah. just something strikes me as well, something's we a must. The mystery movie, which we reviewed last Wednesday, yeah. and it ends on a cliffhanger, and we know that there's no more of those in the can or even signed, and, and that oh. that is very unlike Hallmark. But we just get the feeling that it just 
I don't know how because I thought they were doing better than any other cable company. So I don't know. I don't know. What's hey, here's the thing, and I I I 100 agree with uh, you guys. Follow this stuff closer than I do, so this all sounds right. I'm going to say this though: if there's one area where Hallmark is going to shoot the works and not like cut corners, it's Christmas. That's right. That's right. I That's true. It's, well, it's and too I, much of a golden goose for them. And I think they can also still cut back money wise and still make the same amount well, of money maybe like this is there the there are you know uh, uh, ways that they can cut back that don't involve less movies maybe this is the strategy it's to make christmas they make all their money at christmas but to stop hemorrhaging money the rest of the year by cutting back on some of these other things could be, could I, be. There, the uh the big um article the stories that are being posted this week is about how when calls the heart hasn't been renewed yet i mean despite the great Whoa. ratings, but the ratings, the demo, uh, it's not is, 18 to 55. It's, it's all 55 up. That's right. So, sure. yeah. you know, at what yeah, point do so they, many, do so they, many, so many walk-in tubs you can sell people, you know, <laughs> <laughs> at what point do they, uh, you know, say, sorry, sorry, Hardys, sorry, Hardys. That, that day would be tough, man. That I, day would be tough. I'm mm. kind of looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> like just the outcry on Twitter from, 200 really loud people i think is going to be awesome <laughs> but does somebody else sweep in and scoop up when calls the heart yes. is that oh, where like boy. up or somebody decides you know what this is our moment to shine That's this right. is where Dude, we now, you know over. you know who would be wise to do it would be netflix yes because nice. netflix is already trying to pull people away or lifetime like they're trying yeah. to pull people away from hallmark around sure. the holidays they can say mm -hmm. well we're also going to get you the when calls the heart but we're not listening. No, no, no. We're not here. We're not rooting we're not exactly. for that. Oh, heavens, no, no, no. No. Huh. no. Lord, no. But I'm. we know. If we didn't speculate, what would we be? You know? <laughs> We'd be nothing. We'd be nothing. <laughs> We'd have to watch more we Netflix just, yeah, sequels. We'd just he be here twiddling our thumbs with a Christmas prince, a royal wedding. <laughs> hey, we can't have that. No. We can't have that. Um, but let's do it, I guess. Uh, a Christmas prince the royal wedding it's not just a the uh, it's so not just a christmas prince the royal wedding yes okay. a there is one christmas prince he's over there he's uh he's just one yes, of many one of many but this is that the, one of many yeah. is having one royal wedding fair enough i can't, I can't make it any clearer um it originally aired on november 30th 2018 and it went a little something like this um so we are one year removed uh, from last week. Does it feel that way? It does. Um, Amber, Richard, they are still in love. They're still engaged. And they have decided that they are going to get married on Christmas Day. It's bold. It's bold. But they're doing it. Um, so Amber, or her father, Rudy, knew Rudy. Stop same you're messing around. Same Rudy. fun, I guess. Uh, they uh, travel to Aldovia to plan the wedding. And um, if you were thinking, Amber's not going to be blogging anymore. She's going to be a royal. No more blogging. The nerve. <laughs> she's not going to give that up. Uh, she's very overwhelmed by how the royals want to do things. The protocol as they like to say. The lack of control that she has even over her own wedding um, and them trying to even control what she puts on that darn blog. She's not having it. It's very overwhelming for her. Richard is struggling uh, with something that they're calling the New Aldovia Initiative. Uh, apparently, it's not working out because money is just disappearing. Unemployment is skyrocketing. Um, low wages are causing people to really be upset. He gets booed at one point, and you don't want that. Um, so they decide they're going to bring in um, Lord Leopold. Mm. Lord, no one knows how to get out of a sticky situation than Lord Leopold. He just gets it, uh, and he comes in, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to figure this out, everybody. Don't worry. Um, Simon, you guys remember Simon? Of course. Of course. Uh, it wouldn't be a sequel without Simon, they said. And we all agree. And so Simon's back and uh, welcome back into the family because Richard's just such a good dude. Um, they're all gathered around reading Christmas cards together. And one of them is real sad. It's like uh, 
if the Joker wrote a Christmas card to the royal family. <laughs> um, and they're all like, whoa, this is dark. And so they move on. But Amber's very fascinated by this card, this very disgruntled, unemployed worker who is just upset at the royal family and that darn initiative. And so she goes to investigate it with her friends who are over for the wedding. And they find out that the the uh, initiative has been failing because they're, they're, none of the work that is uh, happening is going to local workers. It's being outsourced to these nude comp- nude not nude. These Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, for what I gather, they're fully closed. Fully closed. We don't okay. get into All it. Right, they good, could good, be good. nude. I don't know. Uh, but they're being outbid, and so it's all going outside of the country. How? Why? We don't know. Um, the paparazzi shows up. Uh, she's in a, a bar uh, doing this uh, investigation. Uh, the paparazzi shows up. Simon swoops in. Good boy, Simon. Um, and he's there to, to help. And so they decide we need to research this even further. And um, luckily for everybody, Emily, you guys remember Emily? She knows how to hack things. Yeah. She- because why not? Um, and so she hacks in, and we find out that there's this company, it's Glockenspiel something. They're doing stuff, and there's money, and they, it's bad from what I gather. It's bad totally from what... Totally nude, you're saying. Yeah, totally nude. 100% okay. nude. Um, so the wedding's being planned, and um, finally... Uh, finally, uh, uh, Amber's like, I, I have to take control of this. I don't want to do some of this stuff. And um, she she's then brought in, and things are made even worse. She's going against protocol, plus she's going into bars. Ugh. And she's like, sorry, I was investigating um, my husband's uh, bad uh, initiative. And he's like... <laughs> He's like, well, that's not cool. I'm mad at you. And she's like, you didn't stick up for me. I'm going missing. And she, so she disappears. Uh, Richard does go to find her. And, um, you know, remember that pri- that little uh, shack in the woods? She goes there. Um, and uh, th- that's nice. And so finally they go back. And um, Amber's told so all the news that they found in the hacking. Um, great hack of 2018. And uh, they go. They confront Leopold. Leopold is like, yep. It's me. And so they send him to the dungeon, which does exist. Richard gives a Christmas uh, address on the telly, uh, telling everybody everyone's getting their, their jobs back. And, I don't, and, and money. All the money, that, all the money that you've yes. ever m- missed, you're getting it. It seems like a logistical nightmare, yes. but yes. he <laughs> said it anyways on uh, for the Christmas time. It's time for the wedding. It happens. We're all loving it. There's a party afterwards, a reception, if you will. Um, and they go outside the, to escape the conga. Can't blame them. They have a kiss. Conga can't escape it. And that, my friends, was a Christmas <laughs> Prince, the royal wedding. We did it. That's exactly right. Oh, boy. They're not, they're not nude. Again, we don't like they don't not, say it. They're outsourcing jobs to nude workers. They don't they don't they don't explicitly Man. say whether or not they're nude. Okay. So I I assume they are. The, you, Winters you are cold in Eldovia. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's right. Well, how else would they be getting these jobs? Mm. They have a, a a leg up. We're going to take a quick break <laughs> and uh we'll be back here on Back to Hallmark. Uh, We're back. You proud of that leg up joke? I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll, I'll think about it later. Okay. When right. I'm laying in bed tonight yeah. and I'm thinking back on my day, I'll I'll, I'll text like you. Be like a thumbs up. Thumbs up yeah. Just one or the other. You guys all do that, right? Yeah. Of course. Um, let's talk about this movie. Break it down. We have four segments to do that. And we always start with the hot take where we share exactly how we felt about this movie. We don't hold back. And I'm going to start with my good friend Alonzo. Alonzo, uh, Christmas Prince 2. You happy it happened? <laughs> I think there's a reason why we don't get a lot of sequels to these mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, generally because I think for the most part, these kind of cable Christmas movies are such fluffy confections that, you know, they, 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 they exist just long enough to get you to the happy ending. And then the whole souffle collapses. So the idea that after the souffle is collapsed, we're going to prop <laughs> it up again and somehow like, you know, build another story out of these characters that are completely ridiculous. Um, yeah. It doesn't 
quite play. I mean, I, I, I think everybody's game, you know, they, they seem to be having a good time making this thing. They're trying to move the story along and move the characters along. So, I mean, there, there's definitely an, an effort is being expended. They're not just doing the same movie all over again, but the movie they are doing is kind of dumb. Yeah. Kind of. Wow. Kind of, <laughs> it's kind of you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I uh, this movie f- uh, feels long. I will say I didn't uh, hate the second part of this movie, like the second half. You once, were in on the mystery. I'm in on the mystery. I was in on that. Um, once the friends come over, it's fun, I guess. Uh, <laughs> for the most part, um, but overall, it is just unnecessary. A sequel. I I, I don't know. I, it's just I don't know. I didn't need it. Um, but you know, the characters are likable enough and it's fine. So it, it, it happened and I'm not mad. I'm just, uh, I think, uh, I could have done without it. Were if, you going to say, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I'm not even disappointed though. I'm not disappointed. <laughs> uh, I've just, I could have done without it, yeah. but it, it happened. It's here. And so, uh, here we are. <laughs> the fact that there's a third one of these is just beyond me. I, I don't even know where to start. I, this movie, there are a lot of sequels that are unnecessary just in, in life in general, but they all, look very necessary in comparison to what we just watched. It's absurd. It it is just a pure paycheck of a movie. Like everyone is thrilled to be getting paid and to have work. And it is just a useless, useless movie. It's interminable. I cannot believe at one point I paused that we were not even halfway done. Um, it's it's really, 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 really bad. Uh, the new characters they bring in nude. Not nude. Okay. They're fully clothed. This is PG, G ish. Um, There's a new dad, which we will get to. Not a nude ad, a new dad, which we'll get to. Rudy uh, Rudy. is new and he's very New York. Uh, That was a little bit weird to see a new character playing the same role as a real Aunt Viv situation. Um, There's a a wedding planner uh, who something um there's there's a lot here but nothing at the same time it is 100 percent useless it is one of the worst i've ever seen really 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 bad one of the worst you've ever, ever seen ever because there's just no there's no stakes in this at all zero they're gonna get married they're gonna figure out where the money's going it's not like they're gonna kiss at the end at least there's this thing of fish out of water marrying a prince like at least we have that in this movie it is just trying to put people in situations where they've unlearned the lessons they've already learned like the the (laughs) prince king richard his mom how many lessons can she learn at the end of every movie (laughs) <laughs> it, it is abs- like absurd. Like you can't be bad for an hour 20 and be like, okay, I was wrong twice in a row. Like you can't do that twice in a row. And then he like all of a sudden just doesn't have time for her. And she, cause she should know what she's getting into. You want to put inflatables out on the front lawn of the castle? <laughs> Get it together. What she says, the line, she says, blogs, comma, that's what I do for a living. No, no, no. You're about to be queen. Gosh, darn it. Get it to get it's t- It is one of the worst I've ever seen. Stand by. This movie, this movie wants her to be both an investigative journalist and a woman who has spent the last year blogging about how she's going to marry a king. That's right. That's exactly right. I, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, blogging might be what you do for a living, but it's only because of the other That's thing right. That's that right. you do. That's right. It's not yeah. what you do for a living at all. And I, I disagree that it stands on its own entirely because they do the same beats in the movie. They have another archery she, scene where she breaks something. They have another scene in the cabin that's important plot-wise. They have the queen and that other woman who changed their mind at the last minute about loving this girl and accepting the fact that things need to change. It's the same movie. It's the same exact movie, except somehow they find a way to play it both ways when it comes to... Uh, the workforce and i don't know how they do that exactly but they do i just it's awful it's a really really bad movie what do we think about rudy too i mean he's super new york would you rather are you team rudy one or team rudy two can he make a five alarm chili (laughs) can he make any of those mexican dishes you know the kind (laughs) like 
like, I, like Ru- Rudy one made so little impression on me that I honestly didn't notice that this guy was different until uh, y'all mentioned Wow, that. how dare you? I didn't, I didn't even notice that it wasn't the same guy. Stop trying so hard, Alonzo. It is such a different, <laughs> it's a completely different performance. Like Rudy one, there's a lot Rudy of one, uh, history, history there because he doesn't make any yeah, sense. And he's not consistent mm. in his accent. Rudy two is full like, you know, got his hands out of town. There will like, be like, no hey, mistake. Hey, Mama, it's a cup of you know. Rudy too looked like they were looking for the Canadian equivalent of the guy who ran the peach pit on 90210. Yeah, wow. Boy, that's a callback before Bram was alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rudy too is a is a is a treat. It's like Rudy too heard our podcast somehow and was like, "Oh, I'll commit to a That's voice." Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Oh, I'll commit, guys. <laughs> you want New York? You got it, pal. You got it. Buckle up. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's time for all the feels part of the show. We talk about what in this movie gives us feels. Alonzo, feels to be had. Whew. Um, for most of it, I did not. Uh, I will say I kind of got dance number feels at the end, Stop even though it. it was kind of, it was kind of inept. I, I grant you, but I, I, I thought at least they were going for something the and, con- and they, the, they wanted to have the conga, the conga line. They, they wanted to have sort of one big splashy moment. And I particularly appreciated the fact that the, the princess Emily is a DJ because that is such a thing that a crowned head of Europe who has <laughs> yeah. no other seeming yeah. function in life would do is be a dj you know she probably has like a a, a residency set up at you know some club in vegas <laughs> so i i totally bought dj princess emily uh, i love that dj princess it. emily setup was her laptop with garage band open with nothing happening yep yeah <laughs> and a turntable attached yes That's right don't worry <laughs> everybody we have it all don't worry Ooh. um i no real feels uh for like not even really christmas feels it was just like they christmas is a, a, a throwaway it shows here. a bad tree on purpose um, like, I, don't, it's, I, I mean i got sad so sad fill it with inflatables yeah. yeah but they also never show the tree decorated do they I don't know at the very they end they do okay at the very end it's covered in awful awful inflatables and that was the one time in the movie that i was on the side of the press and protocol link. yes yeah yeah, yeah. The like, crown, you're right inflatables are terrible don't put them in their tree there's a lot wrong with a monarchy that just sucks up needed funds from a country but when they're right they're right yeah. and when it comes to inflatables <laughs> at the castle they're right i don't know how else to mm. tell you that i got like womp womp feels when uh emily couldn't do her play they're shutting the whole thing down and and the custodian to prove his point unplugs the christmas tree in the in the lobby <laughs> yeah he's like oh well, it's time to leave here. now yeah. everyone chain on the door yeah that's right yeah i got womp womp feels <laughs> aside from that no feels for brand i mean i kind of got uh wtf feels about simon's existence uh i mm. i still that guy must have a just an absolute shark of an agent to get him negotiated in for sequels i don't know his purpose at all and and you know I, that's all i have though i don't have anything else that's fair hey let's take a quick break we'll come back I think we'll all have stuff for the wait. No, Watch. that's it. I'm out. We'll see what happens <laughs> here on Deck the Hallmark. We're back. We're talking to Christmas Prince, the Royal Wedding, the 2018 hit classic uh, from Netflix. Uh, we're at the wait. What part of the show where we talk about anything in this movie? Let's go wait. What Alonzo, you got some stuff. Oh, one or two. Uh, I, I think I really noticed this time more than the first one. And I don't know if it's just from repeated exposure or just the, the different camera angles, but this is a McCastle, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> this is not very, this is a pretty minor castle. Like it's pretty small. It's basically like a country home with some turrets. That's I, right. I, don't, I mean, it, it, they really are trying to push this as the palace and it's like, I don't know. And then on top of the fact that you have, there seem to be more Royals than staff in this movie. Yep. Like they're, yeah. they're, this is a very underpopulated, like, you know, service uh, crew here. Uh, like the whole chef and two, there's a chef and two assistants and everyone else is yeah, royal. Basically. Yeah. And, and just, it, it seems like the, and this the, is the, the, pre-COVID. All have their hands this is pre-COVID. So there's yes, no excuse it felt, here. It, it felt like a COVID movie where yes. like, we can't have that many people. No, you're just cheap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There were only so many non-Romanians you could afford to put into this movie. Apparently. And you got to pay Simon uh, again. So there's that. Pay Simon. Of course. Well, 
he must have really just like been a, a, a champ to work with, yeah. always on time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. attitude, remembered everybody's birthday. A pro's yeah, that's pro. right Exactly. Uh, Sahil. <laughs> what about him? I don't. <laughs> Are we doing this? <laughs> it's like we, I, I want I want the Martin Short character from the Father of the Bride movies, but he also should be not white. So we're gonna do this. Uh, ay, ay, ay. At least he talks in third person, Alonzo. Oh yeah, quickly. Like we get to that very quickly. Um, uh, yeah, uh, just in, in general, just walking cringe for me, Alonzo. We are watching the movie, and I said. What did I say? You said Martin Short. I said, I can't, one, I can't wait for this on the podcast because this is absurd. But two, this is a non-white Martin Short from Father of the Bride. That's what's going on here. Great minds think alike. (laughs) That's right. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, I have to say, like, as much as I, I admire that that Netflix was putting in gay characters way before Hallmark felt comfortable doing so, that we get like Sahil and you know, office gay spare in this movie. It's like eh, maybe 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 all representation isn't a good you know, thing. Sah- uh, Sahil <laughs> is a, really a microcosm for the whole movie. It 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 uh, <laughs> it's t- it's bad it's bad uh it uh, it's offensive and it shouldn't have existed uh I, I think that's that's what i'm trying to say he's a metaphor for the whole series that's right um the the, the notion that you would know immediately when federal money is being bled dry and that wouldn't well, show up in an audit three years later if only sure sure um Toboggan green screen. Oh, oh boy. It was bad. That was wild. Painful. Yeah. Painful. Yeah. It looked uh, it looked like an attraction at Carowinds. It's what it looked like. <laughs> it was they weren't even trying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was like they barely had wind blowing on them. Like they just it, it was it was like watching those old movies where where Annette Funicello is surfing and somebody's like spraying water in her face from <laughs> off camera. Like it was it was that bad. Um, uh, OK, so if the if the country's labor force goes on strike to protest the uh, the the whatever the 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 new initiatives. So does that mean are the, the are the four people on the royal staff scabs because they're still at work? Yeah, they're still setting up the Christmas pageant and doing yeah. all that stuff uh she writes down the word fishy yep yeah yep. that's a classic <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right up there with fraud fraud question um, marks oh so, yeah same boat for sure just not on a post it <laughs> Uh, I wrote down what the wedding is really about, but I forget why that's dumb, but I'm sure it was dumb. Um, why is Simon the best man at this wedding? Yeah. Like, I know well, he I didn't has even notice small, he was. That's funny. Does, does he have no friends or other relatives at all? Like, no, yeah, you tried to stab me in the back a year ago, but yeah. please stand by me. You were an uh, ultimate villain. You life. literally tried to steal the crown. Like, you, you're... Yeah. You know, you're a Shakespearean bad guy, and now you're the best man <laughs> of the king. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, and then finally, the shot at the very end of uh, when they put the crown on Amber for the first time. Uh, this is going to be before y'all's time, but do you, do you know, did, have you ever seen the old Imperial Margarine commercials no. where the crown would magically appear on somebody's head? No, but I'm it, here for it. it. They were... They were ridiculous and they were intentionally ridiculous. So like you'd have somebody who was just like wearing their bathrobe and eating breakfast. They need a piece of toast of the Imperial and boom, this like big crown would appear on their head. She looked like she was wearing the Imperial margarine. <laughs> the crown. Imperial margarine crown. I love it. Gonna look it up. I can tell you that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I have a handful. Um, one is she knows the exact second that she said yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not just, you know, the hour or the minute. It wasn't just, you know, 1201. No, 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 no. no. Seconds included. Because this is after, well, you know. It was, mid- it was midnight, it, right? It was midnight, but it was midnight when she was still in the diner. That's right. She yeah. watches it happen, uh, and the then he throws the, the snowball. It's not like. One, how, uh, I mean, how do you measure a year? But <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're so right. I just. I, in cups of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It just got it just caught me off guard. Um, at one point, the, they 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 have all the kids in the back of, of in the kitchen, 
and somebody is pouring hot chocolate like Everywhere. a maniac. Everywhere. He li- he's just lining up chocolate uh, cups and just going, and hot chocolate is falling everywhere. It's a waste. Just like take the time and pour it correctly. Um, listen, we all hate royal families, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I can absolutely imagine that something a royal family does every year is gather around and read Christmas cards out loud to one another. That seems like a royal thing they to do. They would have to all be in the same room together, and that's, that's where true. I find yeah, it hard yeah, to yeah, believe. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all, uh, you guys all want to get together and just read all the cards? Even the bad ones. Even the bad we'll ones. We'll hang up the bad ones. We'll hang them up. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, no staff member is going to like filter through yeah. these first and make no, sure no, that we no, don't no. read the ones that tell us to drop dead. Um, <laughs> that's right. Rudy who says everything as if it is a saying (laughs) does say that he always says, don't let the naysayers bring you down. That's right. That's the saying that he says he says all the time. Classic Rudy, which is the least Rudy thing to say. That's right. He he would say something like, you know what I say about naysayers and nothing but stromboli. Like yeah, that's something he would, he would he say. Would throw at least one, one pot yes, on. There'd in there be somewhere. something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. This Rudy. <laughs> about eagles and turkeys, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Rudy doesn't say this. I'm yeah. not buying it. Yeah. Not the real, not, not my Rudy. You know what I always say? <laughs> Don't let the naysayers bring you down. <laughs> yeah. goes, that's a lot of syllables for Rudy. That's yeah. right. It is. Rudy, that's not my Rudy. Um, Leo gave up really fast. Like yeah, he did. <laughs> he he like you said no, it's not me. Here's a piece of paper. Ah, shucks. That looks like the same printer they use for the birth certificates. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I would have gotten away with it if were you yeah. darn kids. That's right. Um, and this laser jet printer. <laughs> Richard gives a, a Christmas speech on TV, and he rips up his old speech, and he does three rips, which yeah. I just feel like was like one too many when you're live on TV. Yeah. It was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Point has been made. I made it. I did it. And last but not least, um, you know, I'll save this one for what the homework. Okay. Uh, I believe it or not, with all you guys just laid waste to the movie, and I've got half a dozen over here still. You haven't of touched. Of course. Um, it, she get they get to Aldonia the airport, and they they think they're going to take a cab, I guess. And then she goes, "No, Dad, the royal limos are here." And I just want to point out that the Royal limos are just BMW's new line of luxury automobiles. Uh, one is a sedan, one's an SUV, one looks like kind of a hybrid crossover model. None of them are limousines. They're all just a BMW that you could buy at your local BMW dealer. That's all they are. Like it is an obvious- And they're not even- Go ahead. They're not even picking them up because you know they're in the red zone. It's right. for loading and unloading. Yeah, only. they're just so dropping they to, like, hike down the sidewalk, yeah. chased by paparazzi. The royal limos <laughs> happen to be there, and none of them are limousines. Mm, I it's be Uber clear. Lux, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Uber Black. Uh, I, uh, I you you pointed out, Alonzo, that the castle is not much of a castle, which makes this one even harder to stomach. They br- take her to her bridal suite, and she is blown away by what amounts to a bed in a living room. And you know what? If you've never seen the castle before, or if this is a Christmas Prince one, Lord help us remember those good days. Like, yes, you can be blown away by that. But if you've been engaged and living on and off at this, like visiting the castle for over the year, you no longer have the right to be astounded by a a, a bed and a living room in the castle. And she just cannot get over it. Like she's never seen something like that before. I I, I just can't imagine it. Um, at one point, uh, the little princess, I don't remember her name. Emily, is that her name? Yeah. Emily is playing piano with the help of the butler and they're playing, Oh, come all you faithful. And then the butler gets up and says, if you'd ever practice, you could play that by yourself. Okay, <laughs> so you, what, you, what you're telling her is, is the motivation for you to practice piano is so you can play Oh Come All Ye Faithful by yourself? I'm pretty With your sure. right hand. Yes, with your right, I just don't, that's a pretty easy one, guys, it, it just is. There's one point in the movie where the prince wants to take uh, the print, well, the soon to be queen out on a horseback ride 
you know, to kind of, it's a callback from the first movie where she sees the wolf and, you know, remembers her training and sits down and, <laughs> and, and he, he's like, all right, let's get on these horses. And then he says, no wolves. I promise. How do you promise that? How can you promise <laughs> that there's going to be no wolves? Did you go have all the wolves shot? Did you make a population go instinct extinct? I don't know how else you can pro promise no wolves. He got into a helicopter and <laughs> shot them all. He just got up there. That's right. He saw what she did the first time, and she said, I cannot risk this again. That's right. No, no, no. She will most definitely sit down again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, no, I just can't. I not can't. on my I watch. It and I immediately just go freeze and sit. That's what you do with wolves. That's freeze and kid. sit. Yeah, make, him, make it easy. Um, where is the prime minister? We meet him once in this movie, and... The prime minister, it's his job to deal with all of this. Like, he's like the president. Like, he just the, the, he is leaving the king out to dry. We meet him one time. He makes small talk with the, the people from out of town, and then we don't see him again. Where is he? What's he doing? I don't know. He spends Christmas in San Sanova. San Sanova. San Sanova. Yeah, they need a prime minister. He's sure falling apart. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, the audacity to not pay any day laborer their wage and the unions to go on strike and for them to say, but you know what we have to do? This children's play must go on. <laughs> it, must, it must go on. We would be inhumane if we didn't let these children badly read their lines on a makeshift stage in the castle. We would. I know there are people starving that can't put food on the table, but look. Emily's got a big kiss. Emily's got a big want. kiss. She's got a big kiss. She's got to get kissed somehow. Good gosh. That was brutal. <laughs> that was tough to watch. Um, and then uh, Melissa and Andy, her two friends, they show up at the castle. And Andy meets Prin Princess Emily and does this big thing. And Melissa says, you'll have to excuse Andy. This is his first royal wedding. <laughs> His She's been to tons, yeah, however. Yeah. <laughs> M Melissa is just globetrotting, getting invites to all the royal weddings everywhere. Like, who do you think you are? You're unemployed. You're not going to a bunch of royal weddings. Get out of here. I don't understand. That, that line, I just can't. I, I don't know how we how that made it in the final script. You've there. never been to no, you've been. You, oh, you're a big royal wedding boy. Oh, you're somebody. a seat saver. <laughs> seat saver. You just fit right in in those, those events. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I'd go to the back. Sorry, someone. I got someone. Someone's coming. I lay out my jacket across. It's I bring. Funny. I bring multiple jackets. In this one picture, everybody looks normal. In another picture, there is some sort of cross between man and muppet down there. I don't know where. I don't know where he came from. Way well, it's just weird. It's weird. See, with the, the caterers, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Can, can we can we at least give a little appreciation to actual Hallmark for the decor of a Christmas Eve yeah. room? Because this castle, this palace, has these just limp little red ribbons just yeah. hung it's on just the wall sad. and not even very sad. Located. Just so there's something in the frame that says, "Oh yeah, this is a Christmas movie." Well, I think that they they saved a bunch of money in the budget. And what they did was, is they had her give the line about, I want the inflatables and the crown said no. And then they just basically let you think this is a battle. She hasn't won yet till the end of the movie. And, and ah, they saved the money go. that way, but it's bad regardless. <laughs> just watch the Christmas Prince. They wish they could do what Netflix, Netflix will never do. I'm like sad. I, uh, I was so happy we were done with that impression. Sad. What are you, what are you typing on? Is it, a, is it a new social uh, net social? I'll let you know in a couple months. Okay. We'll see what happens. Cool, cool. See it's, how a, it develops. it's a new social network. Oh, <laughs> now I'm just going to throw up over here real quick. Uh, <laughs> mm, uh, I did it. Oh, boy. We're yeah. not going to go down the rabbit no, trail. We're not, no, we're not. We already, we're did. Not. We already did. No, yeah. well, yeah. there's so even cool. more. There's a rabbit uh, trail uh, uh, on that. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's do what the flicks. what the flicks here. Uh, where we wonder what could have been maybe happened, give some clarity to the questions that we still have. Alonzo? Uh, you know, I, I think there needs to be uh, like a Mystery 101, whatever the Netflix equivalent of that, the, 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 the Netflix movies and mysteries, uh, where it's uh, Princess Emily Hacker uh, solving mysteries with uh, Office Gay. Hey, I, I, I love think it. That somehow I think those two could really make some magic together. I love it. I agree 100%. I love that. Um, I also, I have a uh, Emily question and then just another 
random uh, Meghan Markle question. Um, one is the at the end the the conga line that you liked. Um, the they leave to go outside to avoid that situation. Yeah. And mm. the conga line then comes to them, and the music's getting louder as the group is coming out. Yep. Did Emily like? Did she attack? Like, does she have a speaker with her? Did she like uh, soup up the wheelchair with a nice yep. speaker? Little speaker. Like, that's the only like that'd be a pro DJ move. Yeah, that would be. She that, she hacked into the castle speakers. They <laughs> yes. have some external ones. Yeah, I like that idea a lot, <laughs> Dan. Um, so in the, uh, wild cookie baking, hot chocolate going just kitchen, of uh, uh, just run amok scene with all the kids Mama in the kitchen, Lisa. the uh, princess Emily and the, and the, the kid that she's crushing on, they have a little moment where the kid, she has frosting on her nose and the kid wipes it off. Great moment. Um, later in the movie, uh, the, the woman who's trying to shut everything down on pr the princess's blog, uh, points out why are you putting these pictures on your blog and it's a picture of that scene with princess emily having icing on her nose and i want to point out there's no one in there taking pictures when that scene is happening so is there some elaborate photo system camera system in the castle I think there might be some shots of her with her phone like kind of clicky clicking she's in I there think. with her phone Yes, I think oh, I, I think they. Threw I, didn't one see or two shots I didn't see that. her in that scene, like her. Like I maybe, didn't maybe maybe my brain put that scene in there to explain the blog, but uh, I could swear that's yeah. the thing that happened. We'll, we'll go back. We'll go back to, to explain we'll the take blog. it to the tape. Yeah, we'll take it to the tape. Mm -hmm. tape hey, it's, have you all seen Superman two? Yes, sure. Okay, you know you know the the evil Kryptonian lady. With the crystal, yeah, from the, she's in the crystal, right? In the, yeah, she's trapped in the in the album cover right. with with Terrence Stamp. Yeah, that's the protocol lady. What? Yes. Oh my goodness! Never that saw it coming. The, 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 the press and protocol lady is the is one of the bad guys from Superman too. Oh my goodness! The more you know, and I can die happy. Now. <laughs> uh, we did it, and yes. I've got good news, everyone. They made another. Come on! They made a third <laughs> one. We get to see what a baby looks like. I mean, you guys have you ever, guys ever seen a baby? I, you know, all babies look different. I can't imagine uh, <laughs> the just just the utmost respect they're going to treat the third movie in this in this trilogy with. Like, I'm already excited. Maybe it's, it's just like, it's it's just an hour and a half of labor. Maybe it's, and it's beautiful, everyone. <laughs> it's beautiful. But there are people wearing crowns. There are crowns everywhere, everywhere. and there's like one Christmas there's, there's, tree in the corner. There had better be a crowning joke. Oh, oh. bang, 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 bang. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Hey, yeah, uh, we, we did, did it. it, everybody. Alonzo, thanks for being here uh, again. Oh, uh, sorry for pleasure. next week. Um, <laughs> we can't wait. In advance. Oh, no. uh, until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live and yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray, set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com for more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad free. You can go to BrambleJamPlus.com. Hey, Brad, you know how Nationwide is more than an insurance company? Yeah, they're one of America's largest financial services companies. We get that in a song like Business Life Retirement. Or Nationwide's there to protect. I'm kind of the jingle guy. I'm not sure I agree with that. Well, I'm not sure I like your hat. Well, it would never fit on you. Products issued by Nationwide Life Insurance Company or Nationwide Life and Annuity Insurance Company. The general distributor for variable products is Nationwide Investment Services Corporation, member FINRA, Columbus, Ohio.